Sarah Brandon Sack Bun joining us in the studio, studio rather for our monthly conversation. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me today, Dan. Always good to see you. So, you know, recently the county, Vigo County, gave its update on what was happening. Mm -hmm. And they said really two things that they're focused on. It, it is increasing the population and also increasing incomes. And I know you all work closely together. How does the city help with those things? You know, absolutely. So that's kind of one of your common and taglines in municipal government at the city and county level, right? We want to see jobs. We want to see the population go up. We want to see that median income go up. How do you do that, right? Uh, you know, when you've got a company like Amazon and Intec coming to Terre Haute and Vigo County, you've got to focus on workforce development. What does that mean, right? Can we take someone off the street? Can we give them the training needed to work in some of these jobs? That's why I support programs like the Goodwill Excel Center. Uh, they're hoping to open their doors this fall, which will be huge for the community. It allows folks to come in, get that high school diploma, get connected to employers. Uh, the city is looking at, at adding job fairs to several large events, if not this year, the next. But can we reach out to Hoosiers who, who need to attend a job fair, who need to get that upskill program and get them back into the workforce? That's really how you go from you know population and income and synchronize it with a, a term like jobs and, and increasing that income. So it sounds like you need to make sure your workers are trained and have the education that would want, want a company to come here, but then also let the workers know, hey, we got these jobs available. Absolutely. So part of it's communication, part of it's those upskill workforce development programs. Ivy Tech has done a phenomenal job at that, and we're looking to add the Goodwill Excel Center and further connect with our school corporation to get more workforce development conversations going. Okay, so let's talk about some upcoming projects the city is working on. And I know that you guys have some things in place. You're trying to combat blighted homes. You're trying to yeah. do different things like that. So on the blighted homes, you know, we've got uh, some bids going out for demolition this week, and we're hoping to get those back and begin moving on demolition this month. Okay, and, so you're you know, getting rid of those homes that are an eyesore. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, as I always say, we always wish that folks could come in and, and put the money in to repair it, but unfortunately, sometimes those just aren't the options, right? You, you never want to tear down if you can avoid it. Um, the city has, has decided to look into the, the grass fee for these negligent landowners who, they don't watch Channel 2, they don't live in Terre Haute, they live across the United States, and they buy up properties, and, and we're going to start holding them accountable. We're going to look at a lot of different uh, building permits and codes that we can use to make sure that if you own homes in the city of Terre Haute, you're taking care of them, you're taking care of our renters, our neighbors, our fellow churchgoers. So we're starting that process, and it did start with uh, looking at our, our city's grass fee. Uh, we're always on the lookout to make sure that these folks are, are held accountable. And now, to make sure that they mow those lawns so that you're not next door to the weeds? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the best way to, uh, to describe it. And when it does come to, to city parks, uh, we are pumped to, to do our groundbreaking for Ray Park later this month. Mm -hmm. Our parks department is hard at work. Whether it's golf or more summer programming and I really encourage folks to check out uh, the City Parks Facebook or the City of Haute's website just to see so many events coming up in our parks department and of course golf has started and I encourage folks to go out and, and take part in that activity. Well certainly today would have been a great day for that. With well, the legislative session kind of winding down, anything though that you're still watching up at the State House? You know I stay really connected with our local legislators and, and we have conversations. Um, it is winding down. It was a very fast session. And, you know, we'll look at some of the summer studies that they do. Uh, all, all mayors are always looking at how they talk about, uh, you know, property taxes and some of those caps. And we're also very attuned to, you know, the casino tax conversations at times as well. But I'm keeping a close eye and in close conversations with our state senator, Greg Good and Representative Tanya Path. I got you. You want to make sure your funding is still coming. Is that it? Usually? That's always, yeah. the, always the conversation indeed. Yep. All righty. And then, um, um, let's also talk about the casino. You kind of mentioned that a little bit. A little over a month before it opens, what kind of conversations are you still having with the casino people? What kinds of things is the city doing to prepare for that? Absolutely. So, you know, we're always talking about public safety, making sure we are prepared for that. You do see some increase in, in ambulance runs and some public safety runs. But, you know, we are also looking at, hey, are we in the right position with our infrastructure, with uh, specifically East Margaret, some traffic lights? So a lot more conversations with NDOT, actually, uh, as a result of that casino being added. So we are poised for some large commercial investments on the east side and we're looking forward to, to some of those investments coming to fruition hopefully this summer. So maybe some more development out on the east side. And so are we may maybe see some road construction projects come up out there to accommodate all of we that? We are going to start seeing several in the next couple of years. Yep. All righty. And then finally, oh, we're so excited. ISU, of course, this weekend clinched, you know, the top oh, of the yeah. bow vow. That was for, you were at the game? I was at the game. Yeah. I was cheering. My voice is a little bit shocked because I <laughs> 
I, I will admit sometimes I, I do yell at one or two of the referees, okay. especially this last crew. <laughs> Not sure what they were watching, but we'll have to check those uh, contract prescriptions. Okay, and so then are you going to be able to go to uh, St. Louis? I know you're busy. I don't know if you're going to be able to go to St. Louis. Unfortunately not this weekend. Okay. I've got a drill with the guard, but okay. I'm confident the boys in blue are going to come back with a victory. What Coach Schwartz has been able to do with that program is very inspirational. I mean, you look at the guard play that they've got with those two high-scoring guards combined with Robbie down low, and they've got an offensive system that I guarantee every other coach around the nation is looking at saying, hey, we want that. So wishing Coach Schwartz and that entire roster the best. I know they're leaving here later this week, and they're going to come back with another trophy to add to their collection, and boy, do they deserve it. Uh, oh, from... We certainly hope, that's for sure. And how's it helped the city that yeah. these guys were so successful? I mean, when you're getting nine, ten thousand folks into that arena, just look at downtown during some of these games, right? People are pumped. They're wearing blue. They're, they're visiting our downtown restaurants and our bars, and you know, it's a, obviously the food and beverage tax is a, a good increase, but it gives our community something to have some pride in, right? You know, we're winning like we haven't won before since 1979, and, and you know, you're seeing folks who are five, folks who are 50, folks who are 75, 85, all getting amped and pumped for this basketball team. So it's bringing generations together. It's bringing the community together. And of course, it is great basketball and, and they're going to win this weekend. Oh, we certainly hope so. Mayor, always good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for coming in today.